Hi everyone, so my name is Claire Johnson. I'm the Business System Director for Terex Materials Processing and I'm delighted to be with Bianca Robinson, the CEO of the charity CEO Sleepout, which does fantastic work raising money to help the homeless and other charities. Hi Claire, yes yeah, sure. So we are a national charity, we're also a kind of a national movement of business leaders and we bring those business leaders together like your very own Andrew Bullock, um, to spend a very uncomfortable and very cold night sleeping out under the stars. And we do that in about 20 cities across the UK. And we do it because we feel very strongly that not only we can unlock compassion and understanding among people who can actually make a difference, uh, but we can raise big money and that money can be redistributed out to charities right on the front line of homelessness and hardship in those cities. It's a big okay, so job. So a wonderful cause, and that would kind of lead into some of our own Terexway values of citizenship and respect for everybody. Um, Bianca, can you tell us a wee bit about your career path, maybe your education, maybe some of your history of your career, and how you came to be the CEO of such an amazing charity? Okay, yeah, well, uh, you can probably hear in my accent that I'm not um, I'm not UK born and bred. I'm a Kiwi. I'm from New Zealand. And um, and I did start out my career with a degree in um, visual communications design and marketing. And I thought, that's the way I'm going to go. And of course, I think, you know, careers are always a squiggly line. They're never a straight line. <laughs> um, and um, it's weird that, you know, the opportunities that presented themselves to me have taken me to this place. But this is where I feel that I really am at home and, and I should be. And it's about that sense of personal fulfillment so so I did travel after I got my degree and I went to the states and then I came to the UK and I, and I kind of built a career in business development and sales and got into that agency world that kind of marketing agency world and then I specialized in brand and digital marketing and within that then I, I, I was managing director of a web and creative agency in Middlesbrough which we started in the recession <laughs> Oh, yeah, for the next five years, and that's still going. I did sell my share back in 2015. Um, but from there, that took me on to freelancing, freelance brand messaging, digital marketing. And that's when I got the phone call from the person, uh, Andy Preston, who set up this particular charity, and he needed somebody to drive it forward and thought that I would be that person. So here, here I am, seven years later, still doing it, still uh, losing sleep, 80 <laughs> sleep outs, <laughs> and counting. 80, did you say? So 80, yeah, I've lost count, but it's in, it's in the okay, 80s. Okay, that's very, very impressive indeed. Um, so were there any defining moments in your career, you know, that you would really say, yeah, that, that made a difference to me in my career? Yeah, I think as managing director of um, the web and creative agency, I was one of five shareholders. And so um, it was really interesting because I was always trying to pull in the direction of creating social impact, social value, getting amongst the community. I mean, we are in Middlesbrough. These are some of the most highly deprived postcodes in the whole of the UK. As everybody knows, you know, they're bottom of every single league table for, for welfare and health and poverty and all of the things. Um, and so I really wanted to make that difference. And I think trying to pull the other shareholders with me in that thinking, where all they could think about was profit, um, was really instrumental in me wanting to make a, a, a career change. And I happened to work in the same building as Andy Preston, who then he went on to become the elected mayor of Middlesbrough. Um, but we we sort of had coffee and things like that. And, and he twisted my arm to do the very first CEO sleep out in 2013. Um, and I said to him, just as an aside, I said, Andy, that was an amazing experience, but I'm never doing it again. I'm never, ever. <laughs> Famous <laughs> last words, Bianca. <laughs> exactly. Um, but as it went on, you know, we had conversations and I do remember saying to him, you know, I feel like my personal values aren't being addressed in the business. Well, it's like go out, win the business, put, put the business through the sausage factory, chase the invoice and, you know, again next 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 and, and and I really felt that that sense of personal fulfillment was missing and I think people like me people who are values led and values driven feel it as a as a, a real sense of pain you know they need to fulfill that part of them um, making profit and making a successful business is a great and exciting ride I mean it's a huge it's a hugely rewarding thing but I think sometimes our measure of success when it doesn't include, um, we talk about the triple bottom line, when it doesn't include people and planet, and it's just profit, 
it can be a bit shallow. So what part of my my kind of message is, um, is for business leaders to really think about that. But for me, I've now found, you know, I've found a purpose and, um, and you know, I've never been happier, really. I've never as, well been as, running it, as well as running it as a highly successful non-profit business. So it's still a business, but it's not, you know, obviously your profits go to the charity so and go to the people that need it. So, yeah. yeah I know. So it, it's a, it is a charity. It's a, it's a charity registered in England and Wales, but I run it because I have that, you know, that managing director kind of, head uh you know i run it as a business and but i will say it's not like a, a business where i can actually run my my costs up to 100 percent of my turnover <laughs> i've got a very limited yes. um budget and very limited resources and i think it might surprise the team at terex and to know that i'm the only full-time paid employee so i i do manage an army of volunteers but everything we do is literally on a shoestring so we make a big noise uh, we punch above our weight Brilliant. We're very cost focused as a business as well. So that's interesting. <laughs> um, I happen to know that you are mother to twin daughters, Bianca. And I just wondered if there were any moments, you know, you know, you hear people talking about work and home life balance. And I just wonder, did you ever experience any challenges in that regard? Or, you know, how did, you, how did you manage that? Very much so, Claire. And I think as women, you know, that that is the big challenge that can hold women back from those positions of responsibility or those higher level, higher paid roles. Um, I, uh, my twins are 24 now, so my work here is done. <laughs> you say that, but it's never really done. But um, but yeah, in the early days, it was almost like I had, it was like snakes and ladders. You know, you get to a certain point in your career and then the, the, the babies came along and I, I had to start from scratch and rebuild that career. And, and at that time, we moved back from New Zealand to the UK, to Saltburn by the Sea, the real Saltburn, an absolutely beautiful surf beach in the north of England. But of course, it's, it's in the Teesside area. So, um, so yeah, I, I started when I landed and I got a job at Galaxy Radio as a sales and advertising sales rep. And with twins, it was just, it lasted about six months. And I nearly had a breakdown because <laughs> I was driving up to Newcastle every day, coming back at seven o'clock at night, absolutely exhausted, putting the babies in the bath into bed and reading them the story and then falling asleep fully clothed on the sofa, you know, it was, and then again the next day. So it was really, really, really tough. And I think that those are the kind of things that people don't realize if you are, if you want to create a life for yourself and you are driven and you do want to get on that career ladder, having a family is one of those things that um, we do need to think about carefully in terms of equity for women. Um, I do think that things since COVID, the pandemic have changed in that we can offer people with families um, some flexible working and actually think that will be game changing for women and parents because it means that we can get the most out of them we can um, they can work when they're at their most productive and they can meet the demands of family life with which doesn't you know when you shut the door and go to work those demands don't stop you carry an emotional burden all day yes. <laughs> all day and, and you think actually this early years are, years were pretty <laughs> you know yeah, the, the the, blur. Yeah, and the times I went to work with a kind of a knot in my stomach and, you know, worrying about what was going on with them as teenagers, you know, it's really, it's really interesting. And I think, I think considerations towards equity for women who are, and, and all parents really, who, who are raising families will go a long way to productivity. And we're seeing, seeing women in those higher uh, roles that carry more responsibility. So I suppose that you're, you're kind of answering my next question, which would be, what are the responsibilities of business leaders to ensure that we don't lose the incredible, talented women who may feel um, under pressure with the challenges of trying to manage the family? And not just women. Obviously, it's, you know, historically, it has been predominantly women that are the primary caregivers for the children, but obviously um, working men, working fathers too. Um, what do you think the pro responsibilities are for business leaders? Yeah, I think it's to take everybody on an individual needs-based assessment. And I think, you know, first of all, a, a, person, a job should always be given to the best person for that role, no matter what gender, what shape, what colour, what kind yes. of ethnicity, what, what disability. If they are the best person for the role, that job should go to them. And then it's about, OK, what are the reasonable adjustments that we need to make 
to ensure that we get the highest level of productivity from this person um, and create a world in which they can do their best work. So that's about equity. It's also about inclusion. And it's thinking about things like, and I'm sure Terex has, has got all of this, but things like, how's that person going to manage childcare and how can we help? How, uh, what, what's the maternity slash paternity leave? What does that look like? Because it might be that the mum is a career person and does want to head back to work as soon as possible, but values the importance of having a primary caregiver staying at home with that baby. So, so paternity leave, and if, if you look at the Norden, the Nordic, sorry, uh, states, they've got that down pat, and it's a really great example to follow. Um, but like I say, individual assessments, how can we work with this person to get the bring out the best in them? Yes, absolutely. Um, I suppose that leads me on nicely to, you know, we are a large engineering company and as a STEM, so science, technology, engineering and maths business, we find it challenging to attract female recruits into our business. And I was just wondering, from your perspective, from the outside looking in, would you have any advice for us in that regard? Yeah, I definitely think work has to be done up, upstream. And I see this in, in Teesside, you know, where I live. There is a lot of work investing in primary age girls um, and young people to encourage them into STEM subjects. And I listen, girls want to do that stuff. They want to be going about in hard hats. My daughter, Isabel, she's got an engineering degree um, and she I, I don't think she could think of anything more exciting than going about a site, a construction site with a hard hat, you know, and making sure things are done properly. So believe me, girls do want to do this stuff. They just don't know it exists. So let's go upstream, go into primary schools. This is some of the work that I do on Teesside uh, with organisations like Power of Women um, and, and actually tell people you can't be what you can't see. So you've got to show people what you do, show people what's available out there, show people and get them excited about it and just let them know so it's on their radar. Um, and then and then there are pathways on Teesside into that. We have a STEM centre with Middlesbrough College. So there is a pipeline and industry has demanded that Teesside has created that because there is a skills gap for sure in STEM. Yeah. Um, would you say, would there, would you say in your in your career path um to date, would you say that there's been any person or group of people who've, I know you you mentioned um uh, the mayor, <laughs> um, but would there, would you say there's been any other like mentors or groups of people or, you know, um, networks or anybody that else that helped you along your journey to get to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in when, when I first landed here um, on Teesside, I would go and I was in business development roles, remember, so I would go into networking and it would be a sea of suits, you know, <laughs> It's very male oriented because of the type of manufacturing and industrial heritage that we have here and, and the kind of firms and jobs that we have here. So I was thinking, where are the women? <laughs> and um, and sort of you spot another woman. Um, and bear in mind, this is 20 years ago, not the same now. Um, but we started to form a network and there was a, there was a fabulous network in 2009 that formed called the Assist Women's Network. And they asked me to look at, they asked my company to look at their website, which we were happy to do. And um, I got plugged into that. And, and we have formed a bit of a sisterhood over the last, um, well, 10 to 15 years because um, it's hugely supportive. It's hugely supportive. We amplify each other's voices. We amplify each other's messages. We've brought women into the spotlight that would be ferreting away, doing amazing things, but we just couldn't see them. Um, and then... Yeah, I think I think locally that was that was instrumental in a in overturning almost the face of what business looks like on Teesside. And I'm sure where you are, um, Claire, and where in all the areas where Terex will have a hub, it will be the same. It will be very heavy industry manufacturing based um, networks. But I think we've managed to change the face of business on Teesside and um, and that's been really, really in instrumental in helping me grow and giving me the confidence to get out there and share my voice. Yeah, and it sounds like obviously you're a network of women who support other women to succeed as well, which is which yeah. is wonderful. Yes, um, and we have mentoring to that effect as well. So there's lots of stuff that goes on. 
Yeah. Um, so in Terex, we still have a very long way to go. There's a huge gap gap um, between the percentage of men um, who work in Terex and the percentage of women who work in Terex. It's, it's still huge, huge percentage. So we definitely have some work to do there. Um, so that's good to get your advice on how we attract more females. And what advice would you actually give to women in the workplace? So we have lots of women, different different levels uh, across the business, entry level positions, middle management, some leaders. What would you say to any woman, regardless of regardless of her level or stage of her career, who maybe wants to advance or who wants to make a change? What advice would you have? I would say go for the next best opportunity that gets you into the direction that you want to be in. I think you do it all starts here. So you do have to almost visualize where, what you would like, but not too prescriptive. So I knew that I wanted to do something that that gave me a sense of personal fulfillment that allowed me to live through my values and that used all my skill set. And then this opportunity came along. So I think once you understand the kind of um, career you want to be uh, creating for yourself, then when you spot those opportunities, they, they come at you and they, they're kind of loud and clear. You really do recognize them when they come along. So it is about taking the next best, best opportunity. And then I would also say, don't be afraid to take that kind of off ramp um, if it feels good to you, because that could lead you into something really exceptional. That's a really great fit for you. Um, I think as well on those bits of advice, I think women have traditionally, and there is statistics to bear this out, we do tend to sell ourselves short with a bit of imposter syndrome. And sometimes women um, will throw their job application in the bin if they think they don't tick every single and excel at every single requirement for the role. Whereas uh, we know because the statistics reveal that fellas will go for the role, even if it seems like, you know, two, three um, two, three times above their, their current pay grade and skills and experience. So, you know, women need to do better at pushing themselves forward and further than they think they can go. Okay, wonderful. Um, so tell us, is there any other, like, experiences or final thoughts or things, you know, what do you want to, what would you say if, like, obviously you have two daughters and, uh, your daughters are going into business. Uh, one of them's obviously an engineer. Um, what would you say to them? What like what advice would you give her to say, you know, to be the best that she can be? It's really hard to give advice <laughs> to your own daughters, but to girls in general, um, I think, you know, set your sights, aim high and um, aim aim for the stars and you'll land on the moon or is, is it the other way around? I don't know, but aim high and believe in exactly. yourself. Um, and just keep going because, like I say, my career li line isn't a straight line. It's a squiggly line. And it's, it's been an interesting line. And it has had ups, downs, sideways, you know, disappointments, yeah. failures. And I think it's about getting up, dusting yourself off and having that level of re resilience and self-belief to know that it's not the end. You get up the next day and you crack on. You, know, you try something new. You do a bridging job, for example. You you make it work. And um, and don't get disheartened. It's a, it's, a, it, it's The world we live in is not easy at the moment for young people. Um, cost of living is really going to impact the type of lives that these young people um, have. And so... I think it is about working out what do you want out of life? How are you going to get there? And then just getting focused on it. So that, some of that sounds like really good advice you would give yourself, uh, you know, at the start of your career yeah. line as well. Is there anything else you yeah. would want to tell your yourself at the start of your career? I the, younger, say, Bia the young Bianca starting out, fresh out of college. <laughs> don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be. Don't let your self-doubt hold you back. That's the one. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Bianca, I'm so delighted that you're able to share your story with us this morning. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, obviously, the charity is fabulous charity and we will share the links with our team members after this as well. But is there anything else? Is there any final thoughts that you want to leave us with or anything you want us to think about as a business, as women, as men who support women? 
or just as a as a team in general any kind of final thoughts yeah just you said as men who support women that's that's that listen this is all about just everybody playing to their strengths and recognizing that women have strengths and they might be different but they're equal and uh, it's not about women taking over everything <laughs> you know yeah. if men are best place to do that job fantastic and it's working with and just almost ignoring the fact that you're working alongside someone of another gender um I think um, I'm a Kiwi, so I grew up in New Zealand in my early years. Um, you know, New Zealand has, uh, has always prided itself on the level of equality it's managed to reach. It was the first country to give women the vote, for example. Um, but no, there was a TV campaign funded publicly um, called Girls Can Do Anything. So I, for, you know, when you're little and you're watching TV, it was women and diggers and women and women and hard hats and women engineers and you know, women, I don't know, medics and all kinds of amazing things that that just was burnt into our brains growing up. And you know what, I think in the UK, we could do with a publicly funded campaign to remind girls of all the careers that they, you know, are capable of, of, of doing and will excel at if just given the chance. Girls can do anything. <laughs> exactly. Anything. Exactly. And any final thoughts um, on or any final words about your, you know, from your charity point of view for us? Oh, we, yeah. Andrew has slept out once and, you know, it's very addictive, this night sleep that you, <laughs> when you're lying awake at three in the morning. Um, yeah. So so we are running CEO Sleep Out Leicester again on the 11th of April. That's the one Andrew's coming to. But we have about 16 booked in across the, the UK. So we're looking for senior SL, SLT, senior leaders, um, anything from director level and above. Or, you know, if you want to pull a team together, that's also great because it adds to the vibe. We are there to raise the big bucks that will make a big difference um, to frontline local charities and, and obviously change lives of people who are facing unbelievable hardship at the moment and homelessness. Um, I think my big message, I think I alluded to, to it before, Claire, which is that it is about what can you do as a leader in your business? What can you bake in that will strengthen the fabric of your local communities and of society as a whole? Because I do think that leaders have, uh, they have a power, they have an opportunity and they have a responsibility really to actually be be stewards of the communities and stewards of society. Um, so that's what I leave them with. We don't sledgehammer it. We, we, we sprinkle the fairy dust over them while they're asleep at three in the morning, <laughs> or morning whatever. Um, but CEO Sleep Out is an incredible, incredible thing. And people do leave feeling like they've done something really meaningful. Um, although I'm not promising anyone a good night's sleep as Andrew will testify to. Um, well, he's, he's going cool. back for more though. So. <laughs> What, what can we say? So a really fabulous thing to do. Bianca, let me ask you, what does International Women's Day mean for you? Do you know, it's a fantastic thing that we have this opportunity um, to kind of celebrate International Women's Day, amplify the voices of women doing incredible things, but also talk frankly about some of the issues that we still face. It might appear that, you know, women uh, have equality, but there, there are still barriers to overcome. And certainly... Uh, and countries around the world where they're very far from achieving any kind of equality. It's great to have this all this resource that we can share that um, tells the stories of women doing phenomenal things in the workplace. Bianca, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, I am really confident that it will be an inspiration to many uh, of the viewers today. Um, so thank you so much. And we wish you all the very best for your next CEO sleep out. And who knows, maybe we'll convince a few Terex, a few more Terex people to join Andrew Bullock from our Colville site. So let's do it. No, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.